Alright, welcome back to Eastern Investigations. Last time, we we got the evidence we needed and finally solved the case of the kidnapping turned murder. And also, one of the kidnappers didn't get charged with anything. I guess we're just going to let that go. Because, you know, it was a self-kidnapping and there was actually a murder. And also, did we ever recover the money? No, we did, because Armano said he used it. He, we did. It's fine. Anyway, this time, we're going to start the next case. Or, episode, case, same thing. You know, they're same things. Anyway, episode four, Tinder Out Reminis, let's go. Okay, Faraday. The young lady calls herself the second Nagaratsu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up is taking me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Hey! The courtroom! Look at these guys. Yeah, that's right. I did it. I killed the guy. But it was the great thief Iragatsu who told me to do it. Objection? I said the vendetta. What are you trying to say? <gasps> Don't you get it? I know that's right, any of the Iragatsu. Wow, crazy. <gasps> the Iragatsu is the man standing there at the prosecutor's bench. Are you saying I'm the Yagaratsu? Thank you to deny it. You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy. Well, are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yagaratsu? That's exactly what I'm saying. Mr. Rail, I think we heard a bad enough of it, are you? Your Honor, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You gotta believe me. Well, that's a crazy case. <laughs> in accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Oh, hey, look, it's young Edgy. September 10th, 3.20 p.m., District Court. Third lab, third floor lobby. Look at all these brand new people. It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been excused by the defendant. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Edward? Oh. Hello, sir. Have you read over the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I mean, there's everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is almost complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing sort of perfection. I understand, sir. I had a chance to stand in court at an early age in my career. I'm honored and proud. So I have watched over your studies, I'm giving this rare chance. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. That's such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. Hmm. Mr. Von Kama, hello. Are you a murderer yet? Yeah, I think you s at this point, yes, you would be. But, um, that's here nor there. Anyway, hi. How's it going? This trial should have ended just in... <laughs> this trial should have ended in just in one minute. This defendant was picked by the security camera, correct? Exactly. It's clear the guard say they only killed because he intended to do so. He had more outrageous to claim that the case prosecutor, Brian Faraday, gave the order. Ha! Faraday is such a fool. 
<laughs> He's been cornered in his own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Brian Faraday? <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense. You once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. Rescuers are guardian of the court, more with no obligation to outside matters. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. It's worth disgracing ourself as Faraday has done will not be forgiven. Have no fear, I will not let you down, sir. Place of the accused prosecutor Brian Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured an outer recess for you to prepare to assist that. Show them all the power of Von Karma. At least trial. So have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, explain that case to me. I want to see if you really know what you are talking about. Understood. Tell me about it. Murders committed on the same... On December 9th, December 8th, in front of the Kodopian Embassy. The victim, Mr. Dead Man. <laughs> Come on now. I know all the names are kind of on point, and that's the point, but Dead Man? Come on now. That's a little in the head, don't you think? <clears throat> anyway. The victim was a staff member at the Embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackerel. Mackerel? Why? Was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. Fully placed under arrest in possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, the great thief Derek Gorotz, who had successfully retreated the Hodopian embassy as well. First, Will claimed that he would, himself was Derek Gorotz, but did he not kill dead men? I wonder what he expected to gain from such a that lie. It's possible that he wants to go down and in the spotlight if he is found guilty. There is surely no limit to people's insanity. Because I don't think that was insanity, but I don't know. But I digress. Continue, Wedgeworth. Yes, sir. On the trial, the prosecution had the security footage that captured the murder. Chris, the footage clearly showed Mr. Rell is the murderer. The Mr. Real finally can clearly be seen in the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant rejected his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to. By the really like Ratsu, Brian Faraday. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this may appear to simply be the murder of a Kudopian Embassy staff member, people are actually referring to it as the second KG8 incident. The second KG8 incident. I'm sorry, very sorry, sir. I fear they had the star steady hard enough. <laughs> well, then, among the police, this information that only a flexed few were privy to. Please enlighten me, sir. Sure, tell me about the second and probably the first as well. I'd like to know. Sir, what do you mean by the second K KG8 incident? In order me to tell you, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three year old newspaper. Why do you just have these on you? Anyway, we have it. You've heard of the Romano Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. Secretary of Ernest Armato, the Romano Group's director, was arrested. On suspicion of the smuggling. Correct. CS2 was an employee of the Romano Group. And the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was C who brought the crime to light. If, however, Miss Yu was silenced for justify in court. Wasn't a Kodopian... Kodopian embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a Kodopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. Or due to lack of evidence, the case went unsolved, unresolved. Lack of evidence? Heh, <laughs> I don't know if I was in charge of the case. Would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. Makes me welcome as I found guilty. My mentor really is dedicated. Yes, he is. He's also... A... He's also a bad guy. <clears throat> Freddy was the prosecutor in the case then. He was as pathetic, as pathetic as ever. 
Miss Fredo is in charge of the KG initiatives as well. That's right. Now, once again, the victim in the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. Just like the last time, the victim was. M Vin that was. We're just talking, actually. <clears throat> I, I need to get away from fucking Von Karma Ray because he's gonna murder my voice. Like he murdered somebody else. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was about to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered before his day in court against a smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did the with the, in the KG-8 incident. That's why it's being called a second KG-8 incident. Yes. Yet there's one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? So-called noble thief to descend here into an uproar. The great thief Agoratsu. Agoratsu, I better find out more. Yeah, tell me about him. It is true that the Agoratsu showed up at the Cobdopian Embassy. What could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to steal any... No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal the secrets from the Kodobian entity itself. Since it's the item that the Agoratsu stole from there was sent to the police. Who is it the Agoratsu sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the Agoratsu is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By turning the stilled item to the police, who has proof positive the Agaratsu. And he betrayed the embassy in the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would be the first time the Agaratsu left events behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Agaratsu, then it's just yes, Faraday. Mr. Faraday. He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Faragrasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG Anderson and the Agaratsu case. So Faraday really is a lot up on his plate. Oh, who is this little girl? What is it, little girl? Hello. You're scary, mister. <laughs> you need something. Um, I want you to trade these- I want to trade these coins with you. Fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. It looks like you've got exactly a dollar. This is what you want. Thanks! That's exactly what I needed. Alright, bye. That child would be here to watch the trial. How oh, despair for a child to be running around like that inside the cross. There's no one ever respect for this country's justice system anymore. Howdy. Paper for the prosecutor's position is complete. Why, do you do you even know how much time there is left for the child reserves? I I'm so sorry. I can't I have you mopping up like this courthouse without protecting an incident. It's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared should prove to be a perfect handicap for me. <laughs> a proud one you are. You'd better collect the evidence from Faraday and pray yourself. Time for your debut, Edgeworth. Is he gone? Do I not have to deal with him anymore? And more importantly, are we going to do an actual fucking Ake's Attorney court segment? That's crazy. December 10th, 4 p.m. District Court, courtroom number 3. Where's the... Where's the defense? Also, do I have any evidence? No. Where's my evidence? Anyway. We have the prosecutor badge. And we have this Denton overview. With just a... Piece of paper. Okay. Where's the defense? Where'd she go? Just what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible the defense is not prepared yet either? Bailiff, where's Mr. Faraday? I I'm not sure I wasn't really paying attention. What are you doing then? Oh, hi, Judge. Nobody's here. Nobody is ready for this. Ah, you must be the one Mr. Rodkummer recommended. Hey, this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there just one celebrating a birthday during the recess? 
I could have sworn they heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. So it looks like the trial is about to resume, however. Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the, vic the witness a liar. But the evidence from Faraday. Where's that blessed buffoon up to? Uh, it's an emergency, sir. It's... Oh, I wonder who this could be. Just silence! There should be no yelling in the secret hall of law. They left move this man from this courtroom at once. <laughs> Please, wait. You have to listen to me. This is an emergency. Defendant lobby number two, Mr. Faraday and the defendant. The two of them. They're... They're both dead, sir. Your honor. What? 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 They're dead. Oh, no. December 10th, District Court Hallway. Oh. Hi, guys. Stay back. Ugh. No one's allowed in the crime scene. Period. This is this oddball think he is. This has been quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rule's defense attorney? Hey you! No ready in the hallway, pal! Who are you to tell me what to do? You're gonna find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. Hi, Gumshoe. You have a nice coat that isn't dirty yet. And you are? Who, me? Hey, pal. It's common courtesy to tell us when your name first for asking theirs. Eh, point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm the district prosecutor. The prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I told you my name. Now do you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe. I just recently achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a detective. More than a dream. It's what I was born to do. Wait. Maybe I should check out and make sure I'm not really in some kind of crazy dream first. This text is entirely too excited to be in a murder scene. A little bit. So, Detective Gumshoe, you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know, I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Well, you're a proud one as a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. So you're just going to have to ask him for all the details, okay? That's me as guarding the door to the defendant lobby, too. Hmm, so you're the guard detail. You notice anything strange while you're on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot and then I kind of froze. You're a detective and an easy gunshot scared you that much. But again, I can hardly claim to know no what it's like to hear in a close range. The detective came running to the scene. Went into the lobby number two together and both were lying there dead. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, you didn't hear a single sign of commotion. Well, that's good to know. Well, I could talk to these two right now, but instead, what snacks do they have? Interesting. There's something special courtroom, court themed food products here. Made them seem sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. <laughs> what? What? I don't. Okay. There's a drink machine. Hmm, a drink vending machine. Ah, now's the time to be pondering what sort of drink I want. <laughs> Come on, there's a poster that says justice on it. Poster of the judge, there's some sort of slogan on it. I really struck at my gag will being so truth closer to me and my hair farther away. Is this promotional poster for the quarter or a hair growth product? Both. There's a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher, I want to be hit in the head with this. I was a victim of losing memory too. Hey, yeah. But if not, as as I'd be a supposed to chuck an head by one of these. Hey, I see what you did there. I see that sly reference. Anyway, next time we will properly meet these two and see what the heck is going on. Because we're about to prosecute a case, and then there's a murder of the people in question of the case. It's crazy. Anyway. Until next time.